After what for me has been a week full of Vex, OpenCL and reading papers, I thought it might be a good idea to build something quick, relaxing and fun, such as this inflated pillowy structure, which has been stitched together wildly. And to build that, I'll start out using a grid, diving in there and not changing its size now, although a pillow with a size of 10 by 10 meters is admittedly big. For now, I want to leave it at that and just increase the rows and columns count. And we might want to increase this even more later, just for now to set up a simulation really quickly. This is a decent enough resolution. So this is my top and bottom sheet of the pillow I want to make. And I want to slightly offset this sheet up and down a bit. So I'm going to use two transform nodes using one to transform the sheet a bit down like this, copying this node, pasting it a second time and moving up my sheet a bit like so up and down. However, to create a pillow out of this, I want to stitch together the edges. So I have to select them using a group node, which I'll wire in before the transforms, setting this to group points, disabling the base group, enabling I include by edges, and then dragging this down and checking on shared edges. So when I highlight this node here, we selected only the very edge points here. Call this one edge underscore bottom, like so. Copy this group node, paste it again here, and just renaming this to edge underscore top. And now in my transforms, I want to move everything but these edge groups that I just created, which I can do by selecting the transform node, going to the group selection up here and just selecting the edge top. And that's exactly the one I don't want to move. So I'll exclude it using an exclamation mark. Just doing the same thing on the bottom here. So I want to select anything but the edge underscore bottom group, again, using an exclamation mark to exclude this. So now you can see we are moving everything but those edge points in this node. Let's merge those two grids together like so. And when I look at this from the bottom now, I can see those intrinsic normals here are flipped. And to fix that, I will just use a reverse node, which reverses the polygon winding just on the lower part of this pillow here. So now that's been fixed. Okay, next what I want to do is set up my vellum simulation, this time using a vellum configure balloon. You could think of this as a pillow being inflated by the padding, the stuffing that's been put in there. To this two constraints, let's just attach a vellum solver. And in my vellum solver, I want to decrease the constraint iterations. 32 iterations were enough, it runs a bit faster. And in the forces, I want to disable gravity by just entering zero for the Y component here. Let's save this and simulate it. Not much happening here. So let's try and increase our pressure in here to say 30 using the rest length scale here. And now it's doing something. However, those individual sheets, they tear apart. And the reason for this is we have not stitched them together. So let's reset our simulation. And after our pressure constraint, let's drop down a weld constraint. Goes in here. Let's drag the settings down here. And I would like to weld together points and points. And I want to weld together my top to my bottom group like this. Drag this up again, add a solver, maybe save this and re-simulate. Already looking promising, however, the behavior of the cloth is a bit too rubber-like for my taste, which is no surprise as we used a vellum configure balloon to set this up. So let's reset this and in the vellum cloth constraint, that's been part of my vellum balloon constraint setup, let's drag this down here, scroll down a bit and under the stretch tab, let's increase the stretch stiffness to say six times one to the power of 10. Also, I want to increase the damping ratio quite substantially. So let's re-simulate that. Okay, that's a tiny bit better. And also to get this behave a bit more wrinkly, let's increase the rest length scale. So that pushes the points apart a bit initially. Now we could dial in a bigger pressure value in here, again, increasing the rest length scale. However, that would just result in a bigger pillow. What instead I want to do is set up those internal stitches here that hold together those two parts. And for that, let me just bring up my node tree again. So for that, I want to create two groups, one on my top and one on my bottom sheet here, and then use a, another vellum constraint to stitch those together. So let's drag these down here. I want to create those groups before I offset those individual sheets. And to drive where those groups are created and where I want to stitch together those two halves of my pillow, I'm going to use a draw curve, which I'll set up under the projection tab to project along the ZX plane like this. Let's just highlight this one and maybe ghost our pillow like so. And using the draw curves tool here, the tool gizmo, I'm just going to coarsely draw in a few curves in there, something like this. Let me enable point display and you can see those points of the curve are not uniformly spaced, which we could fix using a resample node and maybe an attrib blur to smooth out those curves if we wanted to. However, for what we're planning, we can get away with that. Just keep in mind, you can use a resample and attrib blur 
if you want smoother curves. In our case, I'll just attach a wireframe, turning these individual curves into solid geometry. And it's this geometry that I'll use to create two new groups on my top and bottom sheet respectively. Using a group node again, let's work on the top sheet first. And our wire that we just created goes into the second slot in here. Let's highlight this. Again, I want to select points, call this one stitch underscore top, disable the base group and check keep in bounding regions. And instead of using a bounding box, I want to use the bounding object that I just created. And you can see now we are selecting a few points here. As my grid resolution is rather coarse currently, I might need to increase this wire's diameter here by increasing the wire radius. So now we are selecting a bit more points. Just going to copy this group node here, wire it into my bottom as well, and call the group stitch underscore bottom. Like so, save this and uncheck this goes to geometry here. All I have to do now in my vellum weld constraint, I'll have to select the stitch top and stitch bottom group respectively and add those into my constraint that tells vellum which parts of my grids to stitch together. So let's highlight the vellum solver and re-simulate this. And now this gives the first impression of this weird pillowy sculpture that we created. The resolution is kind of coarse, so what I could either do is down here past the vellum solver, attach a vellum post process, which also by default is set up to fuse the areas where I welded together this grid here, so let's uncheck apply welds. And then in the smoothing, maybe dial in a tiny bit of spatial blur, and let's set the subdivisions to Catwell Clark, so that gives it a bit more detail. Also what I could do, if I don't mind longer simulation times, is reset this, and up here increase my grid's resolution to say 200 by 200. Let me just check my grouping. So doing really strong grouping there and also getting a few artifacts from the way this wire is being calculated here. So in the wire, if I uncheck round caps, that fixes my point selection here. And now I can dial back this wire's diameter again to maybe 0 0.33, yeah, something like this. So this is gonna take a longer time to simulate. Again, let's just save this and run it. And I especially like what's happening here when the pillow is kind of crumply still. And when you step through this in the first few frames, there's something weird happening here. And I suspect that we could fight this with going to the solver tab and increasing either our constraint iterations or maybe even dialing in one or two sub steps. However, as this resolves later, I don't mind it that much. And although this res is quite high res, we could still run the eval and post process on it, still increasing its resolution a good bit. So this is the whole setup. Quick, not that dirty at all, and giving you a huge flexibility in what kind of sculptures you create by just being able to draw these control curves in here. So now if you'll excuse me, I'll go and work on the artwork for this tutorial. Let's see what I come up with. And if you want to learn more about vellum, about rendering in Houdini, volumes, or learning Vex, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And to everyone supporting us, a huge thank you, especially to Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys. So until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.